Hey everyone, Zach from thebarbellphysio.com. Today we're going to discuss fixing the knee valgus collapse in the squat. So what's the knee valgus collapse? That's as an individual descends down to the squat, we see their knee collapse in, in relationship to their ankle, and they go into that positioning, which we commonly see associated with a couple different knee injuries and some knee pain in individuals performing lots of squats. And so quite commonly, that is something that we need to address in the clinic or in the gym in individuals having squat difficulty. Now one caveat I do wanna give here with the knee valgus positioning. You'll see a lot of elite lifters when they squat, they'll have this really quick in and out movement when they kind of hit their sticking point of the squat. I think that's different than an individual that squats down and their knee comes in and as they come up, their knee is in. That quick stretch in and out by some elite lifters creates a stretch reflex on the glutes. It also is involved with the adductor magnus's role in the squat. I discussed this a lot more in an article on thebarbellphysio.com, which I'll link to below if you want more information on that. But we're talking about somebody that's knee goes in and stays in the entire time. So there are a few things that we wanna look at in an individual that has that knee valgus fault. Quite commonly, the default answer by coaches or clinicians is to blame this on weakness of the glutes. And because the glutes big role or one of their big roles is to pull the knee out, they'll say glute weakness is part of that, which it can be. But I think it's also important for us to understand the ankles can have a lot to do with this as well. So limitations in ankle dorsiflexion or an individual's ability to push their knee over their toes can result in this. So if somebody doesn't have great dorsiflexion, which is required for the squat, then we'll see their foot collapse down, bringing their knee in and taking them to this valgus positioning. How do we test ankle dorsiflexion? We have that individual pop their shoe off, we get them positioned about one hand width away from a wall. We'll pretend this PVC pipe is a wall. And we're going to see, can they keep their heel flat on the ground and touch their knee to the wall? If they can do that, we're not worried about their ankle mobility. If they can't, it might be an issue and maybe a contributor to their knee valgus. The other thing I like to look at is the ability of the knee to actually drive lateral. Some people lack some lateral ankle mobility, and that will result in that knee valgus positioning. So the way I typically have an athlete test this is, we go down to the base of their big toe, right? Where if I pull the big toe up, we find where that angle is. And I'm gonna hold that angle down. And then I'm just gonna see how far out can that individual drive their knee. You'll find a lot of individuals that with that locked down, they try to drive out and they'll have nothing versus wanting to see the ability of the knee to get outside of the foot. If that shows up, then I know we need to address that lateral ankle mobility. And the way I typically will address that is by putting a PVC pipe outside of the pinky toe and have them just rock forward and out and spend a lot of time addressing lateral ankle mobility. If we've cleared ankle mobility out, then we probably do need to address some hip mobility issues. Another great drill for working on ankle mobility for those dealing with knee valgus is to grab a kettlebell Rest your forearms right in the inside of your quad. So if you flex your quads, this inside kind of teardrop muscle here, we're going to rest our forearms there and we're going to drop down into a squat. We're going to allow the weight to pull our knees forward, but we're going to use our elbows to drive our knees out. And that is a great way to stretch that individual's knees into a better position to avoid that valgus collapse. If we're not dealing with an ankle mobility limitation, then a lot of times that valgus does come from some weakness in the hips. So a couple of exercises that are really useful to use in these individuals. Number one, you've probably all seen this before, but let's take a resistance band, place it right above the knees, and let's just work on squatting with that individual trying to break that rubber band apart the entire time they squat. So that'll really work the lateral hip muscles a little bit. It'll work on them feeling driving their knees out to a better position but we can also bump that up and increase the challenge a little bit. And I like to do that with some lateral taps. So we get down into a little tiny squat, shift all of our weight to one leg and really emphasize driving that knee out. And then we tap the opposite leg back and forth. As this leg goes out, the band is trying to pull this knee in and that athlete is going to resist that positioning. If we want to bump that up a little bit, we can make it a little harder by going kind of in that same position, but now we drop into maybe a deeper squat, but this leg never touches. It goes out to the side and comes back in. And again, this knee's working on driving out, but staying in that deeper squat, staying in this position the whole time, that will burn this hip up, really strengthen the lateral hip muscles 
that help to drive us away from that valgus collapse positioning. As always, check out thebarbellphysio.com for more articles to improve your mobility, your strength, your performance, and to help you reach your fitness goals.